Hi everyone, welcome to BA Geography's Subject Taster Session. My name is Dr. Romola Sanyal, and I am the Program Director for BA Geography, and I look forward to welcoming many of you next year. Today, I'm going to talk about why the presence of refugees can cause socioeconomic tensions in urban areas. This is an issue that will be discussed in different modules in our program, particularly in courses on development and on migration, which you will have in your second and third years. So to start with, I want to mention just a few facts and figures. And I want to begin by noting that there are nearly 70 million people who are displaced worldwide. These numbers include asylum seekers, internally displaced people, refugees, and stateless people. Of these, refugees account for nearly 26 million people. Nearly 61% of refugees live in urban areas rather than rural areas or in camps. So we want to briefly look at how they affect local environments, particularly urban areas in what we call the Global South. In addition to policy implications, we want to look at the theoretical implications this may have on how we understand cities, poverty, governance, and so forth. So if we look at the literature on refugees, particularly coming from geography and human geography, much of this tends to focus on detention centers or on refugee camps. Scholars who work on detention centers study them within the context of global north countries, such as Australia, the United States, various European countries, including the United Kingdom. Scholars tend to focus not just on how boats and migrants are intercepted, but how they are placed within detention spaces and what the implications this may have on their human rights as well as on their resettlement policies. Studies on refugee camps tend to focus on the Global South. Scholarship here tends to look at very large numbers of people who live in camps for protracted periods of time. What that means in terms of how they can exercise their politics, how humanitarian governance evolves, the conditions refugees live under, and so forth. There is also emerging scholarship looking at the growing phenomenon of urban refugees. As I've mentioned earlier, the majority of the world's refugees, nearly 61%, live in urban areas rather than in rural areas or camps. And this is also situated in the global south, often in countries struggling with issues of poverty, governance, security, and social cohesion themselves. Refugees escaping violence in their own countries will go into neighboring countries, into their cities, and often find shelter in informal areas alongside local residents who share similar socioeconomic conditions. Where conflicts generate large numbers of people, refugees may overwhelm local populations and put immense pressure on resources and infrastructure such as water, sanitation, education, health, and so on. There can be increased competition for jobs, goods, and services, and all this can lead to tensions between local populations and refugees. This can threaten governance in many places, as governments may find it hard to contain the effects of refugee influxes, and the presence of refugees can often expose long-running issues around bad governance as well. Humanitarian aid organizations are now trying to shift towards supporting refugees in urban areas rather than in camps. But their interventions can also exacerbate these tensions between local populations, local governments, and refugees. For example, if they support only refugees instead of everyone in cities and in urban neighborhoods, they could create anger amongst local communities who are hosting refugees. Likewise, if they provide infrastructure in informal settlements that are not recognized as being legal by the government, they could create tensions between themselves and local officials. As you well imagine, there are a number of policy and theoretical implications for doing humanitarian interventions in urban areas. There are all kinds of issues that humanitarian organizations, 
local governments and communities face in terms of hosting and supporting refugees and other displaced people. And I mention here some concerns that have been raised by humanitarian organizations. So for example, they are concerned with how to find refugees in urban areas amongst the local population if refugees don't want to be found. How do they support them in urban areas? What stakeholders should humanitarian organizations speak to in order to work more effectively and justly in urban environments? How far should organizations intervene in urban areas? And what should the limits, both in terms of time and nature, of their work be to support refugees in urban areas? But beyond practical implications, there are also important theoretical questions that are raised by urban humanitarian work. The influx of refugees and displaced persons into poor areas where humanitarian intervention may perhaps provide higher quality resources than the state provides its citizens can raise questions around the nature of the state and how it governs. Supporting refugees and extending this support to local population also unravels how precariousness is experienced by different groups of people. We can also probe other questions, like how our categorization of people as refugees or migrants can be problematic, or how cities can also function like detention centers for displaced people, or whether people are able to construct futures or if they're only stuck in the present. These are questions that are raised by a number of different refugee scholars and geography scholars. So in sum, we can take the thread of urban refugees and tug at it. And we can unravel the myriad ways in which this particular issue can affect the ways in which cities are thought of, understood, and governed for years to come. Thank you.